In this example, we'll be doing exercise 1421 that can be found in your textbook on page 657. We are going to calculate the present value or selling price of a bonds payable. The example tells us that our company produces and sells high quality video equipment. To finance their operations, they have issued a $25 million five year 7% bond that has interest paying semi-annually. And it has a market or effective rate of interest of 9%. So again, they want us to determine the present value of the bond using the present value tables that can be found in your textbook on page 642 and 643. $25 million, five year, 7% bond that pays interest semi-annually is what we consider the contract. We have to pay back $25 million five years from now, plus we have to pay 7% interest on the bond, and we're going to make the payments semi-annually to the bondholder. The market rate or effective rate of interest that's given is how much other similar bonds are paying in terms of interest. And so similar bonds to ours are paying 9% annually in interest, and we are offering our bondholder 7%. Before you ever get started on a problem like this, you should identify whether the bond will be selling at a premium or a discount. And when we're trying to determine that, we are going to compare the contract rate, that's the one that's stated in the contract with our bondholder, versus our market rate or effective rate of interest, meaning what are similar bonds paying in terms of interest. Our contract rate, in this case, is 7%, which is less than the 9% that everybody else is offering. When our contract rate is less than the market rate of interest, we know that it's selling at a discount, meaning what we are going to get in terms of cash proceeds will be less than the face value of the bond. We need to give the bondholder an incentive to give us the loan over somebody else because we are only offering 7% interest when similar bonds would be giving them 9%. We also want to calculate our interest payment amount. And we do that by taking our face value multiplied by the interest rate, and that's the contract rate of interest, what we are contractually obligated and what the bondholder and I have agreed to, times the frequency of payment. So now we'll calculate our interest payment. We'll take the full face value, 25 million, multiply it, by, again, our contract rate of interest, and then multiply it by the frequency of payments. We are paying semi-annually, so we have to cut our annual interest rate of 7% in half. So in total, we will be paying $875,000 every six months for the next five years. We're now going to calculate the present value of our face amount and our interest payments. And to do that, we need to determine what we call the N and the I. The N stands for the number of periods or interest payments that we've made to the bondholder. Again, they told us it's a five-year bond. However, we're making semi-annual interest payments. So that would mean we will have 10 interest payments in total. The I is representing an interest rate, and the interest rate we use to help calculate the present value of our bond is the market rate. 
the market rate is 9%. But remember, all of our interest rates are expressed in annual terms, and we're paying semi-annual interest. So we need to cut that in half. We're first going to calculate the present value of our face value amount. And to do that, you'll need to go to page 642 in your textbook to exhibit four. On page 642 and exhibit four, you will see the present value of a dollar table. This is the table that we'll use to help us determine the present value of our face amount. It's the present value of a dollar or a lump sum. And our face value is in fact a lump sum payment. We are not going to pay back any of that $25 million until five years from now. And we will write one check to the bondholder for the total $25 million, making it a lump sum payment. So we will go down 10 periods and over four and a half percent get 0 0.643930 number that we'll use to help us determine the present value of our face amount. We will take the 25 million and multiply it by the number that we just found in our exhibit four the point six four three nine three zero. That gives us the present value of our face value, which is sixteen million ninety eight thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Meaning that what we can buy today for a little over sixteen million dollars will cost approximately twenty five million dollars five years into the future. We now need to calculate the present value of our interest payments, which are also called an annuity. An annuity is a series of equal payments made on set dates. We get $75,000 every six months to our bondholder semi-annually. We calculated that we have to pay $875,000 to our bondholder every six months. Therefore, that is a series of equal payments made on set dates. In order to calculate the present value of our interest payments, we will be using Exhibit 5 that can be found in your textbook on page 643. You'll notice that Exhibit 5 says that it's the present value of an annuity table. Again, our interest payments are a series of equal payments made on set dates, making it an annuity. We'll follow the same process that we did to calculate the present value of our face amount. We'll come down 10 periods and over to 4.5%. That gets us a number of 7.912. And we'll use that number to calculate our present value of our interest payment. We will pay $875,000 every six months, and we're going to multiply that again by the number we just found in our Exhibit 5 table, the 7.91272 value. So in total, all of our 10 interest payments today would be worth $6,923,630. To calculate the selling price of our bond, we will simply add together the present value of our face amount and the present value of our interest payments. The present value or selling price of our bond today is $23,021,880. Let's double check to make sure in fact 
we calculated it correctly and that it came out to being a discount. The face value is 25 million and we are receiving less than that. Therefore, the bond is correctly selling at a discount. So if we journalize this entry, let's say we issued the bond on January 1st, we issue the bond for a loan of cash, and the cash represents the selling price of the bond that we just calculated, the $23,021,880. We know that the bond sold a discount. So we have a discount on bonds payable for the difference between the $25 million face value and the $23 million that we received for selling the bond. So in total, we have a $1,978,120 discount. We now need to record our liability of bonds payable. And remember, our liability always goes on at the total face value of the bond, never for more or for less.